This video is on the Craftsman M110 140cc uh, little push mower. Got this one for a song, and now I know why, because it doesn't start. Uh, and you can see it's pretty much brand new, but it's got the dreaded uh, pull, no start condition. These are supposed to be guaranteed to pull within two starts, blah, blah, blah. Um, doesn't happen. No prime, no choke, just pull for power. Doesn't work. So what we're gonna do first, see why because you can tell like this thing I don't know does it ever run looks like it's run once maybe and we've got we've got fuel in there okay so here's what we're gonna do first take some starting fluid it's gonna spritz some in there you're not gonna get crazy with it and we're gonna pull see if it'll run for a second Okay, so that lets us know it's just a fuel delivery problem, which on so many of these little lawnmowers happens when fuel sits in the tank and the carburetor uh, over the winter or just whatever for several months. It gums up all those little passages. So let's see if we can figure out which ones are gummed up. First step is going to be to take off these three bolts and get this cover out of the way. They are uh, an 8 millimeter um, bolt head. Then with these things out of the way, this should just lift up and we'll just let it roll roll back up the string a little bit and out of the way. Now we get a much clearer view of the old carburetor here and all the linkages and all that stuff. Look this over real good before you do much else because when you're putting it all back together, as simple as this may seem right now, when it's all undone, it's very easy to not remember how it goes back together. So take a picture of it at least, or just sketch it out or something. The next step will be taking these two bolts off here to get this uh, air cleaner adapter off. And to reasons only known to Briggs & Stratton, these are a seven millimeter. Why they're not the same eight as we just used, I don't know. My mistake, here's the genius of it. Those two are seven millimeter head bolts, and then you got two more camouflaged here that are back to the eight millimeter head bolts. There's our eights. So take those two out also. Now with all four of those out of the way, this uh, adapter should just come off and you're gonna have to you're gonna have to peel this tube off of the back. But it just slips off. No biggie. And there's that. Now one of the things you can look for right away is check for the gasket that goes between that air filter housing adapter and the carburetor. Make sure it has one. Make sure it's not cracked, uh, you know, missing big chunks. Sometimes they'll stick to this plate instead of uh, to the carburetor itself. Just make sure you've got one. Uh, the next step is going to be uh, we're going to take the fuel tank off just to keep it from leaking all over and making a mess when we uh, eventually undo this this line going and hinge the carburetor. If I can, I like to, to take them off and just kind of tilt them sideways uh, just to keep the fuel in the tank. But you're going to get some fuel on you, on the lawnmower, whatever, uh, no matter how you do this, unless you're able, unless the carburetor, um, unless the gas tank is dry or you have a way to drain the tank. So the tank is really only just held on uh, just by these little, uh, I don't know, friction brackets or whatever, and you just, you just pull up on it. So it takes just a little bit of, of maneuvering, but you can pull it up and off and just kind of leave it like this to where uh, you don't have to undo any of the lines yet. Now, we'll take some uh, some pliers, squeeze this, slide it back, and pull this line off, and we should get the minimum spillage of fuel. Then you can take the whole entire thing and set it to the side. Okay, I got my super long 
angled needle nose, which is one of the best set of pliers I have ever bought. Give that guy a squeeze. Slide him back clear. And then, this is new, I should be able to get this by hand. But if you've got a tank that's been on there, or a lawnmower that's uh, older, a tank that's been on there for a long time, you'll probably have to have pliers to break that, that loose. And it will just slide back. Okay, and there I just used a screwdriver to try to pry it back a little bit. Came out, you can see there's a little fuel, but nothing bad if you do it like this. Take this guy outside. Just lean it up against it. Now we can proceed to taking the carburetor off and having a look at the guts. Now looking at this, this particular model, uh, you really only have two more things to do before you can take the carburetor off. Because as you can see, it's it's loose already. It's ready to slide off. Uh, so we're going to have to take this linkage out here and this linkage out here. And what we may wind up doing is sliding the carburetor off of the intake side there of the head. Um, and that'll give us a little more room to kind of maneuver these linkages out of those holes. Put a rag down so it can catch some of the extra fuel that's going to come out. Um, when I start tipping this carburetor around. Just pull, get it off of that intake port. Now you've got some room to angle it and get those um, connecting rods off. So you don't want to wind up, even though those rods are kind of flexible, you don't want to bend them, you know, at all if you can help it, because uh, they're, you know, certain lengths. Um, and here's where your fuel is going to come out. There are certain lengths by design to work with the the little governing things on there. This is the uh, this here works off of the wind I think that's thrown off of the flywheel as it's running and can uh, open or close that throttle butterfly on the carburetor to increase uh, the amount of gas going into the engine. Uh, this one, I'm not 100% sure how this works or what this does, but this has got spring tension in it here. Um, maybe as a counterbalance to this other side. I, I'm sure somebody out there knows for sure. But uh, what's behind the carburetor when you take it off? It looks like I've got a, I've got a white, uh, I don't know, is that a ceiling ring or something? And then uh, you got your black, typical black O-ring here. So I'm just going to leave those on there for now so they don't get lost. And here is the carburetor. So the next step is going to be uh, that big hex nut there in the bottom. Uh, you can drain the carburetor bowl or just take off those two bolts on the side and then um, take the bowl off that way. So before you take the bowl off, you're going to want to try to dump out any gas that's left in here first. Although it doesn't seem like much, when that starts dribbling out, it's going to make a huge mess all over. You really don't want it on your skin, it dries your skin out, something fierce. And that should be good enough. Now we can take those two bolts out. Okay, these are seven mil bolts. Take them both out. Now once you get them out, these, these bowls are usually sealed with a rubber O-ring around it. That's a fairly tight fit, so you're gonna have to normally rock them back and forth or even uh, pry in between these two parts here. As this carburetor is not that old, I'm not expecting it to be that big of a battle, but I'm already being proven wrong. So I'm going to have to get the screwdriver and gently, gently, evenly pry a little here, a little here, back and forth until you get it off. So after a little back and forth, back and forth, it will come loose 
and there you can see that that brown o-ring there big old honker take this off and then I always immediately look in here of course I had it upside down but see if there's any real big chunks of dirt or goo or RTV or something like that uh, let's have a once over on that o-ring and it looks good as it should on a lawnmower this new so this here uh, this is your float okay and then the float operates a needle and seat uh, I'm gonna have to get rid of the, the rest of that gas in there and it's pivots on this little pivot pin uh, clearly this is brand new so my guess is that either the maybe the float has a hole in it and instead of instead of the float uh, sinking and letting gas in and then floating up to close off the gas supply sometimes they get full of gas and they just sink and they stay there and it floods everything out if that's not the problem um, then it's probably going to wind up being some either some dirt in the needle and seat or in in this assembly inside here which we can pry pry this out with a screwdriver get it out clean out all the stuff uh, and there's some other parts in there that will come apart but let's see what we got here first by taking out the float and the needle and seat or I'm sorry the needle will come out with it when we pull this out you can see here I'm I'm using a pair of needle nose to kind of pull that back. Be careful, you don't want to score this up and make that to where it's not uh, a smooth pin. So yeah, I just pulled it out that way. Always give this a once over, especially on older mowers. Make sure it's not uh, corroded, scratched up, beat up, bent. That would keep that float from operating smoothly. Throw that in the bowl there. And then, when you pull this out, you are going to get, oh, and it fell off. That's the needle that would normally hang right here in the center of, well, where the, where that little center channel is there in the middle. I'll show you all this stuff. And then that's the needle sitting down there in the gas. And so far, and then that's the seat right there. And it doesn't look too bad. Uh, I don't see anything blocking it really. So I'll dump this gas out. Uh, we'll retrieve the needle out of there. And then we'll probably go ahead and, not probably, we'll go ahead and proceed to take this part out. Okay, so here is the needle. And, you know, what you're looking for here is to make sure that it is not damaged. Focus you. Make sure it's not damaged. It's got that conical look to it. All those things. And again, that looks perfect because it should be. It's brand new. Uh, so then the next part here that we're going to be looking at is this jet assembly here. And I've already loosened it up. Um, again, not, not real rocket science. But what I do is I, I just take a pair of pliers like so, gently grip on here, and I just rock it back and forth until you break the seal on that, that O-ring. Okay. Be careful if you start prying on here, you know, if you break, especially, you know, something to chip off the inside of the carburetor, you're buying a new carburetor. Uh, this one, it probably wouldn't happen, but older carbs, the stuff sits in that gas all that time and gets brittle. So, take this guy out, and now there's a variety of orifices and o-rings and things like this that we need to check. So there's one there that's clear. That one looks clear, but you can see that's just tiny down there. What we're probably going to do next is this thing itself uh, can be torn down a bit. Uh, so we're going to have uh, a go at that, try to pry off the, I think it's the center white piece that comes apart. Let's see if we see any goo in there. Uh, also, let's look down here while we're at it. I don't see anything super amiss down there. 
normally by this point I've kind of seen what happened, why it wasn't running, but on this one I'm not seeing that yet, so I'm kind of curious. Okay, so the centerpiece you can see I've already got it started coming off now. And um, just be careful with it. I used just a tiny flat blade to get in there and just kind of rock it back and forth up here. And then uh, I'll just keep doing that till we get it off. Okay, this is a super tight fit on here. Just go slow, work it back and forth. And then eventually it will reveal uh, these three holes, which look surprisingly clear. And my daughter is coming home. So again, the mystery continues. So now that it's dried off some, I do see just the tiniest bit of that, uh, like that white calcium type buildup down there on this thing. And even that is, you know, you don't want that at all. It can be enough if it gets into one of these small orifices to just totally dork things up. So I'm going to clean all of them out, spray everything down with carb cleaner, uh, put it all back together, and then let's see what we got. So we had gas in the, in the bowl, so we know that gas is getting from the tank into the bowl. The float, and I forgot to mention this earlier, the float does not have gas in it. And that's great, we don't want that. So it wasn't a, a problem of a, a sunk float or a sticking float. Uh, I think we had a problem of no gas getting into the engine. So it's got to be something small in here. And just take your time, clean everything out, and let's put it back together and see what happens. One of my favorite tools I have found to uh, make sure those orifices are cleaned out is to grab the wife's uh, sewing kit. Shh, she's never found this out. So shut up about it, YouTube. Just take her little assorted needles kit there, and then uh, you just kind of get her in there, just work it around. Sometimes it'll go through, I think it goes through these. Can go all the way through those ones. So if it goes all the way through, you know your your gold in there. And then just flip it around on the other side. Let's give it a little, little twist or whatever. And then, because um, I, I also see, I don't know if it should, there's a little bit of gunk down there in the bottom of that tube. So let's see if I can get the needle in there and kind of clean that stuff out. Just from running that needle through those orifices, uh, I'm not sure if it's showing up. You can see that white stuff that's on there. And I will not be surprised if this runs when I put it back together. That there was a chunk of this stuff that uh, maybe I didn't even see, but dislodged it when going through all this. And that's all that was blocking proper uh, air and fuel flow through here. I'm going to use this stuff here to clean it out. Just make sure you don't use brake cleaner or something like that because it can be really tough on plastics and rubbers. Use the right stuff. Okay, so <clears throat> what I just did was I used that throttle body carb cleaner stuff and I blasted it inside that oval piece there. As you can see, there's several orifices in there. And they're, as far as I can tell, they're clean. And one of the things I look for when I do that is to see if I get any of that cleaner coming right back out of the butterflies over here. And you can see there it's wet. So I know that there, there's at least some uh, passage through there. You know, nothing's totally blocked. And then I just, you know, spray the rest of it out, make sure again that the inside of that seat is not clogged and, you know, maybe uh, letting fuel leak through even when the needle's trying to close it off. So now that all this is cleaned out, I'm going to put those two pieces back together. I'm going to slide them back in that oval part of this carburetor. Put the... Uh, needle back on the float and then I'll show you how you know how I kind of redneck check for proper operation of the float